Hello and welcome to Dream Job Ready. My name is Dane Sharp, I'm your host, and this is the second of six short episodes that I'll be releasing with guest Noah Cohen, who's a professional sales coach and online trainer. I believe it's crucial that we all know how to sell, no matter what your job title is or industry you work in. So Noah has compressed and generalized his sales process training down into six episodes just for us. Please go and check out the previous episode because Noah introduces us to the training process and walks through the steps that we're going to cover in this series. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button to Dream Job Ready wherever you're listening so you're notified when we release the next episode. I want to thank you for sharing your time with me and for listening to this episode and I really do hope that you get some great value and learning from this content. Please note that the opinions of guests are their own and not those of the companies they have worked for. This is Dream Job Ready with Dane Sharp. G'day, Noah. Welcome back to the podcast, mate. This is episode two in our series uh, of learning how to sell. No matter what the role, position, job title, etc. I'm excited to work through this process with you. Um, Today's topic in this episode is going to be around rapport and trust. And I want to throw it straight to you and ask, why do we start here in your sales process? Good question. I guess in any relationship that you want to start... If you're trying to convince, persuade, sell, or close anybody on any idea, product, or service, or anything in your personal life, let's put sales to the side for a second, there needs to be some sort of relationship, right? Now, whether that means it's a strong relationship in terms of, yeah, we have a beer after work, or in terms of, I know that what you want and what you have is in the best interest of me. So we start to create common ground. We start to create that commonality to basically make sure that what they want and what we want align. So that's why we start at rapport and creating trust. Now, the hard question I'm going to throw to you straight away as well is, and and we've all, I hope we've all been guilty of this because I certainly have, is sometimes you know your own, you know, uh, desired outcome or or goal that you have for yourself or your business. And you see that person that has what you want, as you mentioned, And you just go gung-ho and go, hey, here it is. You know, let's work together. Um, And probably catch that person off guard a lot of the time, uh, out of nowhere, et cetera. How can I take a step back and, you know, tell me about the process you take to, I guess, making sure I'm putting my right foot forward straight away with this relationship, uh, you know, goal? Yeah. I mean, um, I remember back in the day when I was selling on phone or face-to-face, there was always this person that was the top seller and everybody said, this person doesn't look like they care about anything and they always get these sales. How do they do it? I think now when you peel it back and go to its core, you realize that because they are genuinely curious and honest and they separate themselves from the outcome and they treat each step of the sales process as though it's its own thing. Now, what I mean by that is, Right now, my only goal is to build rapport and trust. That's it. I'm not even thinking about asking questions or closing the sale. It's just, hey, do you like me enough to share information with me? If not, at this very point, even though it's just building rapport, you're still qualifying to see if we can get along enough to have a conversation, right? And that's why you need to be able to build that trust and make them feel at ease to lower those defense walls, to be able to genuinely share genuine information with you to move forward. In a day and age where I guess communication channels are plentiful uh, compared to probably way back in the day where you knocked on someone's door and and gave it a crack uh, from a sales point of view, um, how do I do it? Are are there consistencies? uh, What are the practices that allow allow me to do this, whether it's via email, via phone call, face-to-face or any other channel? Yeah. So for example, on the phone, I always say the first thing that comes out of your mouth should be the person's name, right? Because people's name is their favorite word. We've always heard, we've always received calls that somebody calls us and say, I know I'm, my name is XYZ calling from such and such. How are you today? Yes, that doesn't sound rude. They're ticking all the boxes, but all I'm thinking is, who are you? What do you want? And can I get off the phone quick enough? Right? So the first thing that you can do on the phone is speed to intention. What I mean by that is, Noah calling from XYZ, the reason I'm calling you is, right? Now you've got more attention because you've immediately gone to what I care about. Remember, rapport is creating commonality. What you have to tell and what I want to know is that common ground. Now you're starting to take steps towards building that rapport. For example, in retail, We all have preconceived ideas of what salespeople are and what they do and 
have this thinking about sales itself. So you walk into a shop, somebody comes to you and says, how can I help you today? You immediately, your, your I guess, preconditioning kicks in and says, I'm okay, I'm just looking, right? What you can do in that scenario is to go in there and give them what they're there to, you know, for. Hey, welcome to XYZ, what can I get you information on? Now, that doesn't mean that they will say what you want to hear, but because you've gone immediately to what they care about, they know that it's not just a, I guess, a, uh, a fake pleasantry, pleasantry kind of thing, right? So you need to go immediately to what they want. Hey, welcome to X, what can I get you information on? Speed to intention is key. And in this, um, I guess, in the initial phase there, is it is short and sharp the winner, um, I guess, to start getting conversation back from them? Is, is, that, is that part of it? In my experience, that's been the case. Um, I'm not saying skip being nice and asking them how they are. For example, if you work in a five-star hotel, your approach is not going to be, hey, welcome, what can I get information on? So you still, because you've got to remember that, what is their preconceived idea about you? One, are you matching that? If you're matching, is that a positive thing? For example, in retail, again, they think that I'm just going to ask them how they are or pretend I'm fixing their racks or to dusting and then sneaking a cheeky, how are you today, right? They know because when reverse the situation, that salesperson is also a shopper who also responds the way that salesperson, that customer responds. So you first need to match what the expectations are in a hotel, for example. Hi, welcome to, I don't know, Hilton. Um, what can I do for you today, right? So you need to be very careful in terms of, is my speed going to rattle them? And um, I guess I call it um, pattern interrupt. Is it gonna interrupt the pattern of thinking or is it gonna uh, pleasantly delight them, if that makes sense? Yeah, I, that's, I think across all the channels, that's so critical to think about. And, and, I, and I, I'm super passionate about great customer experience to the point of what you said a minute ago around, I am a customer, you know, nine times out of 10 during the day, right? And, it, and, it, and I hate it. It bugs me when it's a bad customer experience. And that's across whether I'm on social and I get, you know, spammed or disruptive ads or irrelevant ads, or whether it's I walk into a store, as you mentioned, and, you know, have someone scare the scare the heck out of me and, and ask if I, you know, if I know what I'm looking for and I've just walked in. Um, okay. So I think timing to what you said and, and, and just, you know, establishing the right connection that's not too intrusive is key. And I think also I, I'd like to think my understanding or appreciation of customer experience over my career has, has improved as I've probably been able to witness a wider variety of communication channels, um, okay. you know, seeing the way a customer service department um, mm. you know, helps deal with, you know, returns or mistakes from that customers have right onto the, you know, to a shop floor in certain ins instances. It must exactly. be consistent for you as well with the people you're training on a day-to-day. -day. They probably all come from all works of life and you, you've got to pass those consistencies across, I'd imagine. Yeah, definitely. Good point that you mentioned, for example, if you want to do a return. A couple of minutes earlier, I mentioned that completely detach yourself from the outcome. Now, if I'm calling to return a product, you as a sales customer service agent might have a might have a target of retention that I'm going to retain this customer. What are the things that are in my toolbox that I can use? But the first thing is first, your goal is to build rapport and be able to understand what this person is saying and where they're coming from. Remember, you could be them. But what is it that you want? You want to be acknowledged and understood, right? And completely re um, detach yourself from the outcome of returning them and just listen. Hey, Noah, thank you for calling XYZ. How can I help today? That's it, right? A lot of, a lot of um, companies do do that. But when it comes to actually listening and actioning, they say things like, it's the policy. Uh, internal policy is XYZ. You're in a contract, right? And that patterns the interrupt and it actually matches the intention or the perception of the person that, oh my God, I'm going to return something. It's going to be hell. Right, so you're going to have to be able to pleasantly delight them and really show that you care. What about if, what about we flip it and go to you know your traditional cold call or or, mm -hmm. or a pitch uh, when you're pitching your services or your product or your company or, or yourself in, in instances? Um, what's the best way to approach that from a rapport and trust? Potentially, when you're going to someone that has never heard of you, met you, knows your name, etc. 
Yeah, like I said, speak to intention is everything and reason for the call. The way I would say it is, um, Dane, no one calling from Cohen Sales Academy. The reason I'm calling is, I've noticed that you deal with a lot of XYZ. I would mention your audience. I also work in your, um, I guess, in your domain, and this is how I help. What I wanted to find out is have an exploratory conversation to see if what you do and what we have to offer matches. Would you be open to start that conversation maybe at a later date? And I would leave it at that, right? I would ask question, it's called a pulse check, to make sure you know where I, where I am. If it's a no, it's okay, right? But the last thing that you want is to push, 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 and then hang up. And if you're a small business owner, God forbid you get 10 no's and you become too romantic about your own business, and then there you go, that's done for the day, right? And it does affect people's, I guess, um, motivational level. So just be honest, tell the reason, use the person's name, and immediately tell them why you're calling out what it is that you want. I see and I like what you did there, mate. Um, you know, within that, starting to obviously allude into the value that you can bring them and the fact that you're at least knowledgeable about what their product or service is. Uh, and then for those that are just listening to this, this episode but maybe missed the previous one, this is going to be one of, of a six-part series that we record where we're going to kind of break down your complete sales process and we'll do six episodes. And I liked that even in that intro, you started alluding to uh, what we'll cover in the next couple of episodes, you know, uh, framing an agenda, um, starting some of those discovery questions to kind of really dig down on how you can deliver value or deliver, uh, I guess, a good return for that person that you're trying to do a partnership with. That's really good. Mate, um, we said uh, we're going to try and give the listener at least one um, you know, thing to go out and, and put into practice uh, this week uh, between episodes. So I asked you uh, before we hit record, you know, when it comes to rapport and trust, I know you've got some nice scripts. You've already kind of um, mentioned one there. Have you got something that uh, the listener can take and put into practice uh, when they yeah. are making one of these calls or, or meetings this week? Yeah, definitely. I'll give you an example for a retail environment and on the phone. Maybe they can you know, apply to their own scenario and then see how they go. I guess first thing is first, speed to intention. Right, get to the point. Don't people don't waste people's time as nice as I can put because people just want to know what it is that you want and why you're calling, right? And remember, they already have a preconceived idea about what you do, sales and whatnot, right? Just like we do. Now, if they're on the phone, if you've never spoken with them before, if it's a totally cold conversation, you pick up the phone, say, if you do know their name, first things first, Dane Noah calling from Cohen Sales Academy. And then you go into it, right? So without going into too much detail, that's how you build rapport and you tell them the reason for the call. So again, they know I'm calling from Cohen Sales Academy. The reason I'm getting in touch with you today is one, two, three, right? You give them very concise ideas about what it is that you want and then you go from there. In a retail environment, again, intention and I guess speed to intention. Think about if your neighbor was to come over, how would you treat them? Would you like sneak around the couch and then say, hey, how are you? No, you would welcome them openly. That's what you want to do with intention. Hey, welcome to Rip Curl. What can I get you, what can I get you to try on today, right? If it's a no, it's okay, but have the right intention and they will come back to you. Perfect, mate. We will uh, put a draft uh, script uh, for someone literally to copy and paste if they wanted to uh, yeah. in the description of this podcast. So that's in there. Please check that out. Uh, and I guess you did touch on the the likelihood that it could be a no. Um, you know, the world probably gets no, more no's than yes. I guess for someone that's uh, listening and, and maybe building the courage to try this, uh, any words of wisdom that you share when you're doing coaching and training about the fact that a no is is no big deal? Yeah, definitely. In sales, we always say you are there to get a decision that's genuine, honest, and you can work with. It's not a close. You can kind of open relationships down the track. In the next episode where we talk about setting the agenda and outcome and whatnot, we're going to go into how to deal with these things and expect them. I guess to quickly go back to your point, if it's a no, you need to understand what they're saying no to. Why are they saying no to that? Are they saying no to that because there is no rapport? Are they saying no because you've just bulldoze them with a lot of information and they're just like, you know what, I've had enough of this. No, thank you very much, right? So you need to get into your preparation. No is not a personal thing. No could potentially means I don't have enough information. 
or it's their precondition or again, it could be a cultural background. It could be a massive amount of things, but don't take it personally and dissect every call and every visit after the fact and try to find out what you can do better. That's really good, mate. Really important. Keep learning always, right? Awesome. Yeah, right. Thank you for this, mate. Rapport and trust. Uh, I won't say we've ticked it off, but we've got a couple of things to go and practice. Uh, as I said, the script is in the description of this podcast. Noah Cohen, thank you for your time, mate, and look forward to working through how to set an agenda in the sales process in the next episode. Thanks, Dan. Looking forward to it. Hey there, Dane Sharp here. Just wanted to say a huge thanks yet again for sharing your time with me and the Dream Job Ready podcast. I really appreciate you joining us in this episode. I hope you tune in for plenty more. So please hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening so you get notified when we release them. And please connect with us on all of our socials, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter, at Dream Job Ready. I hope you have an awesome week and always keep learning.